Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Fifteen hours ago, there is a post by Edgardo Sambo, son of Rambo. Is Jesus Christ man or God? Man or God? This is the first time I read. I just glanced through the whole article, which is pretty long. Never mind. Let's just go through as we. Just go through it, okay? Because sometimes let it be like a surprise. Because I haven't read it through, so just we uh, stroll along, walk along with the verses, okay? Is Jesus Christ man or God? Some churches and religious congregations would regard Jesus as a god, and there are some religious. Religions and religious congregation that would regard Jesus Christ as only a man, because in the beginning, in the very beginning, there were already two different sects of Christianity. One, the so-called the Gnostic version, which is the Arianism, I think, and the other one is the paganism type of Christianity. Okay. Which already existed long before Constantine decided to uh, come to the conclusion which is which, okay. And still, there are some religions who would say that Jesus Christ is just a prophet, and some spiritual congregations would regard. Jesus as dual man and God, and some would say that Jesus Christ is half man and half God. Now, which is which? How do we settle this issue anyway? <coughs> of course, the only way to settle this issue is through the Bible by having an in-depth analysis. Of the issues concern. Okay, let's go through it. I have not read it; only just glance through it. If we are going to discuss this issue by starting out our basis on the New Testament, then for sure our verdict will be erroneous and non-biblical. To have a biblical view of this issue. We have to start on the Old Testament to have a better view of the situation. We even have to start on the events that happened even before the Old Testament was compiled. Oh my God! Let us try to solve this problem by starting on the New Testament and see what happens. As we all know, Mary, a human being, gave birth to Jesus Christ in the flesh. Of course, he has to be in the flesh. He cannot be in the spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, as stated, as stated in the following verse in Luke two, four to seven, it states, "So Joseph also went up from the town of." Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This verse would prove that Mary had given birth to a male child, and this male child was given the name. Of Jesus. Now, there are some religious congregations 
who would start their argument state starting on this particular verse. So simple, they would say that Mary, a human being, gave birth to a son. Therefore, the son is also a human being and not a god. Sounds logical, isn't it? Of course. They would even add that Jesus was circumcised, got hungry, thirsty and tired, that Jesus was even crucified and died on the cross. So they will argue that Jesus is a man, not a God. They would say that a God could not be crucified. A God will not get tired, thirsty, and a God cannot die. Of course, therefore, since Jesus had suffered all these things, therefore, Jesus was only a man and definite, definitely not a God. Of course, in literal sense, it sounds correct, of course, but in the spirit, spiritual sense oh my god you are too you want to play with words it is logical enough now you want to play it in a spirit spiritual realm it is not logical why it is not logical you see the problem with christianity is they like to play with words Words that is so apparent, they want to make it into mystery, okay? The moment you will go into the doorstep of mystery, you are going, you are going into the Lucifer's room, okay? They would even claim that the existence of Jesus only started on the New Testament, when Mary gave birth to him, of course. Now is this logical? Uh, now is now is this logic correct? Of course, it's correct. I don't think so. Why you don't think so? Because you cannot think. Because the existence of Jesus did not start on the New Testament, but rather even before the creation of the universe. Hmm. <laughs> I like this part and I am a major in this part and the creation of the earth Jesus was already existing Jesus was already existed even before the events that happened on the Old Testament Jesus was already existing okay now, how do I prove that Jesus had already been existing even before the events on the New Testament occurred? If Jesus was a man, would he be able to exist even before the creation of the universe? Okay, let's put it this way. Even in Islamic tradition that God had created all the spirit all the spirit of everyone even before God even before God create the whole universe heaven and earth so to speak so if this guy want to say that Jesus had already existed my spirit too was already existed okay so, uh, okay, never mind, let's continue first. Of course, uh, not. If this was so, sorry, that Jesus had been existing even before the creation of the universe, then definitely Jesus is not a man, but a God. How do we prove it? <laughs> I like this. I really like this. Just let, just see how smart this guy is. 
First of all, let us discuss things about God. We believe that there is a God who had created the universe and everything that exists. Genesis 1, 1-2 That God created Adam and Eve. Genesis 2, 7 Genesis 2, 22 The first person here on earth and this God since the very beginning was already known as the Father. Known as the Father? You can only be known as a Father when there is a Son. Otherwise, there is no such thing as a Father without the Son. Okay? Therefore, when we say God, that is God the Father as proven in the following verses. So how can God be the father when there when the son had not existed yet? Okay? That is for you to think about it. In Isaiah 63:16 it states, "But you are our father through Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father." Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Since the olden times, God had already been called as God the Father. Therefore, when we say God, that is the Father. And when we say Father, that is God. How can you be a Father? How can you have the title of a Father? Without having a son, you can only have a son. Then you are called the father. Okay. In one Corinthians eight six, it states, "Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and from whom we live." Okay, from whom all things came. That means God created everything. That it is God is the Father. Another name for Father to be synonymous is the function of the Father. The Father is the cherisher and the sustainer of the world. Okay. Therefore, when we say God, that is God the Father. They don't know where is the Son. You cannot call the Father without having a Son. I can be called my title, my name, my whatever title. I can be a Father if I don't have a Son. So you cannot call me Father without a Son. Okay? In Ephesians 4, 6, it states, One God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all this verse means that god is the father or for short god the father where is the son you cannot be named a father without having a son okay that means god is the lord god is the lord god is not the father god is the lord numbers Two, three, and four had proven that when we say God, that is God the Father. No, 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 no. In the Old Testament, they always refer to God as the Lord. It is never a Father. Okay. Now let me prove that God the Father had given birth to the Son. Hey, this is interesting. God the Father can give birth to a son. A male can give birth to a son. Oh, so wonderful. In John 1, 18, it states, No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him... The word begotten means to procreate. Mm-hmm. God procreate. Oh my God. Or to give birth. Or in Tagalog. Ipinangganak. This guy must be a Filipino. It is very clear that then that God the Father had given birth to his 
son which was called in the old testament as the son now we have a new revolutionary god that can give birth the god that can give birth that means the god must be a female then how can the god be called a father if the god can give birth obviously this guy you know never think deep enough in john 3:6 it states flesh give birth to flesh hmm? but the spirit give birth to spirit hmm. this verse explains that if mary as a human being flesh could give birth to another human being then god the father as a spirit could also give birth to another spirit oh my god let's just consider it that god created a spirit okay god doesn't give birth to a spirit okay please use the correct word in psalms 94:9 it states Does he who implanted the ear not hear? Does he who formed the eye not see? Yeah. Why don't you ask yourself this question? You have a ear but you doesn't know what is the meaning of male and female. That a male god the father can give birth Oh my god. In this verse the word he here refers to God the Father. If God the Father could provide a human being with ears and eyes so that that human being could see and hear, it is just but logical that God the Father could also provide himself with ears and eyes. <laughs> Oh my god what is this guy trying to say now where was i it is just but logical that god the father could also provide himself with ears and eyes <laughs> how did god see and how did god hear hear without the faculty of hearing and seeing so that god the father could also see and hear If God the Father could provide a human being a womb in order for that human being to give birth then it is also possible that God the Father could also give birth is a need <laughs> This is the best joke the best joke that I have read that a male can give birth to and that a male the father male god the father father is a male can give birth therefore god the father also gave birth to another spirit in which in old testament this spirit was known as the son oh the son of god the father in spirit form what are the biblical verses that would prove that god The father gave birth to the son. Hmm, this is the first time I hear somebody somebody wrote that a father can give birth to a son. In Hebrew 1:5, it states, "For unto which of the angels said he at any time, you are my son, this day have I begotten thee." and again i will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son that means god the father giving birth to the son in hebrew 5:5 is that so also christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest but he that said unto him you are my son today if i begotten thee equals to god the father giving birth to a son again this guy must be blind 
Because when he wrote God the Father giving birth to the Son, he doesn't understand what it means. In Psalms 2.7, it states, I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, You are my Son, this day have I begotten thee. God the Father giving birth to the Son. Again, he used the word giving birth. Okay? As though God is a female. Only female can give birth, am I right? Let's just come to that conclusion. So the father cannot give birth. The father creates. Okay? Numbers 7, 8 and 9. Who will provide that God the father had given birth to the son or in Tagalog, Ipi, Ipin Anga Ana Ang Dios? Oh, this is Tagalog. Now, perhaps, you will ask me if there are some verses in the Old Testament that will prove the existence of the Son. Yes, there are. In Proverbs 34, it states, Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Who has gathered up the wind in the hollow of his hands? Who has wrapped up the waters in his cloak who has established in all the ends of the earth what is his name and the name of his son tell me if you know in these verses God the father was being described here and the author was asking his name and the name of his son in proverbs 8 27 uh, this is for your info a very long writing it states i was there when he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep this is the sun speaking saying that even before the creation of the universe he was already there now perhaps you will tell me that it was not the sun speaking here but it was wisdom speaking the next verse will tell you that this wisdom speaking speaking here was the sun in 1 corinthians 1 to 4 it states Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God there it is the wisdom that was speaking there was the son I like the way Christian try to prove things by just matching up words okay when they see the word wisdom then they try matching up with that the other verse wisdom and then they say here see that's the wisdom in Genesis just like the word word the word the word was in the beginning and then the word dwell with us see they just match up the word with the word and then they conclude oh that is Jesus and that means in the beginning was Jesus and the word that became flesh was Jesus see this is even a uh, I think a five-year-old boy can also do the same thing, you know. In Genesis 1.26, it states, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. In this verse, God the Father was talking to the Son. Hmm. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness okay first the word image and likeness what do you comprehend by the word image and likeness these two words are ambiguous that means image can have so many meanings what is image image what is image and what is in our likeness is it according to what you like or according to exactly what you are you see, already the word likeness in our likeness already got two meanings. So, which one you want to interpret 
is up to your faith okay on which that you want to prove even before the creation of the universe and the earth the sun was already in existence the words our and us in this verse refer to god the father and the son this one i agree i 100% agree because in the beginning god created the spirit of god you know god god is a spirit so he cloned himself can i say that he cloned himself or he create another spirit just like himself or maybe uh one ten of himself you know that's why jesus can do wonders okay that's why god always say let us let us maybe he was maybe they were uh maybe they were two of them one of them is the only true god john 17:3 and one of them is the jesus christ whom he will later send to the earth okay in number 10 11 12 13 will prove that the son the son of god the father in spirit form was mentioned in the old testament proving that the son had been existing in the old testament and even before the creation of the heavens and the earth like i said before i agree i totally agree before god created everything god created the spirit of god which is called jesus jesus is the spirit of god god created him okay but the author here wanted to make belief that even when he he said that the god gave birth what is the meaning of giving birth you by giving birth that means you created another being or clone correct or not so jesus was indeed a creation Okay Jesus is not a creator the creator is God the Lord okay God the Lord or Lord the God not God the Father and whatever which is more into paganism you know pagan will always have a father and a son system okay but the true monotheist religion will only have Lord the God or God the Lord okay which is the only creator now let me discuss the following verse that majority of bible believing christian are so familiar with but they fail to explain this verse logically in order to be understood as though this guy knows everything in John 3:16 it states For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In this verse it says that God gave his only begotten son. Now the question is who is this son that God gave? Is the Bible referring to the son who was given birth by Mary in the flesh if we are going to conclude that the son give, given by God to the world was the son given birth by Mary in the flesh then for sure this conclusion will not be biblically logical hmm why because we are going to violate the bible verse in 1 corinthians 1550 which states now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot flesh and blood cannot also flesh and blood cannot enter heaven <laughs> where i missed the line uh, flesh and blood 
inherit cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Hmm? If flesh and blood cannot enter heaven, then logically flesh and blood cannot also come from heaven. Now since the son given birth by Mary was in the flesh and blood composition, then this human being did not come directly from heaven, giving us the conclusion that the Bible was not referring to the son given birth by Mary to be the son that God gave the world. Then, who was the son that the Bible was talking about in the preceding paragraph? I had mentioned that God the Father had given birth to his son. <laughs> Every time we, I laugh at reading this type of thing in spirit form. This was the son that the Bible was referring to when God gave his only begotten son to the world and this son in spirit form was the one who dwelt in the body of the son given birth by Mary as proven by the verse in Colossians 2.9 which states for in him dwelt all the fullness of the God hate bodily. Therefore, the spirit inside the body of the Son given birth by Mary is the spirit of the Son. <sighs> he go Mary go wrong, you know. In the Old Testament, this Son of God, this Son of God. The father was known as the son and in the New Testament this son was known as Jesus Christ. When we say Jesus Christ we are not only referring to the body of Jesus but we are also referring this name to the son who is inside the vessel or the body of Jesus. Why can't he just say simple that the son named Jesus which was in the spirit form and the son that is in the flesh form is also Jesus. Okay? So it is one and the same thing. The vessel is human but the spirit inside the vessel is a God. Okay, so that means he's trying to say there was a Jesus a spi in spirit form is a spirit and Jesus in flesh form is also a Jesus. Okay, so when these two become one, that means they become God. The spirit plus the flesh become God. Then we could conclude that Jesus Christ is a God. You see? I told you. Since what is inside the vessel is a God, as proven by the following verses in Luke one thirty-five, it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. <gasps> Holy Ghost. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Son given birth by Mary was called the Son of God because what was inside the body of the baby was the Son of God in spirit form. 
This guy go marry bushing what they call it beating the bush. Now, how do we prove that the son of God is also a god? Hmm. Son of God is also a god. In this place, in the first place, was the Son of God a god? In the beginning, was there was God, right? Correct or not? God, God the Father, according to him. But I rather say God the Lord. Then he said, God the Father give birth to the Son. So like Father, like Son. So both are God. So that means there are how many God now? To God, and yet they die, die, say that there was only one God. You see, now, now then you know why Allah say they are deaf, they are blind, and they are dumb. Whatever they write, they see not. Whatever they read, they hear not, and they are dumb. They don't understand what they see and what they are hearing. Okay. That's why Allah say the Christians they are deaf, dumb, and blind. This is proven in this sentence when he say, "How do we prove that the Son of God is also a God? God can only give birth to a God, correct or not? So why do he have to ask this <coughs> illogical question?" Like uh, Mary can only give birth to a human, correct or not? Can Mary give birth to a god? Cannot, because Mary is not a god. So can God give birth to a son that is also a god? Yes, of course. It duplicates itself. It clone itself through the DNA. Okay. By logic, <laughs> if a dog give birth, then the offspring is <laughs> so called a dog. <laughs> As I was saying, can a dog give birth to a cat? Can a cat give birth to a dog? I'm talking about two different species. Can a human being give birth to a god? Or can a god give birth to a human being? Cannot. So, when you say Mary give birth to the Son of God, is totally incorrect. Okay, but being blind, deaf, and dumb, you cannot see anything. You won't understand anything. Just like this guy is. Trying to do, if a cow give birth, the offspring is also called a cow. Can a cow give birth to a goat? Can a goat give birth to a cow? Cannot. Exactly. Can Mary give birth to a god? Can Mary give birth to the son of God? Cannot, right? Because you need the same DNA to replicate itself. So. Where did God get the DNA of Jesus from? Okay, my only answer is God miraculously took the sperm of Joseph, the future husband of Mary, to inseminate it in the Mary's womb. That's why you get the human DNA. Okay, otherwise. Jesus will look like half man, half God. Now nobody had seen God, cause God is a spirit, correct? But of course you can say, oh, Jesus is already half man, half spirit, because you cannot see the spirit. You can only see Jesus in the flesh. Okay, that's logic enough. If a human give birth, the offspring is definitely called human. If a god give birth, then it's just but logical to conclude that the offspring is also a god. Therefore, the son is also a god. 
as proven in the next verse. In Hebrews 1.8, it states, But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. God the Father was the one speaking here and he was addressing the Son as a God. Thy throne, O God. Hmm. Interesting. That God can give birth. A father can give birth. Hey, if not dumb, then what else can I use? Can I say? What else can I say? If a Christian can say God the Father can give birth to a son, huh? what type of dumbness is that? You tell me. In Hebrews 1.9, it states, You has love, thou has love righteousness. And hated iniquity, therefore God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of Arabia, no, no, oil of gladness above thy fellows. Still, the one speaking here was God the Father, and he was addressing the Son as a God, therefore a God. Even thy God. Can Christian please on honestly own up at this point in time? This writer already declared that there are two gods: God the Father, God the Son. You agree or not? If you don't agree, then you are dumb. You know. Now, perhaps you will ask me, bro, at if God the Father is a God. And the Son is also a God, and the Holy Spirit is also a God. Now, how many God are there? They will say, "Oh, still one." You see how dumb they are, you know. They say, "God the Father, one is my index finger, finger, eh? and God the Son is my thumb, and the Holy Spirit." It's also a god, so it's my middle finger. So how many fingers already are there that has been already identified? There are three, but of course they say, oh, those fingers belong to one hand. One hand. See how smart they are, you know? How smart they are! Very smart. Christians are the smartest person in this whole world. Okay. And the Holy Spirit is also a God. Then there are now three gods. Oh, he admitted three gods. But the Bible says there is only one God. See, now, now, there's a reason why I say and I like to repeat it. There's a reason why Allah said in the Quran, the Christian are deaf, dumb, and blind. Okay. Even when they read it, they see there are three gods, but it is actually one god. They turn a blind eye to it, and then they will say, "Oh, still one god." Okay, even though it is already expressed as three gods, but they will say, "Oh, still one god." They turn a blind eye, blind eye. They are not blind, but they turn a blind eye. And there, then there are now three gods. But the Bible says there is only one God. What is the oh, too far? What is the explanation behind this claim? There is that there is only one God. It is true that the Bible says there is only one God. But this one God. The Bible is referring to refers to God the Father. It means although there are now three gods, <laughs> never mind, never mind. Let me control myself. It seems although there are now three gods, 
There is only one God, God the Father, from whom everything came from. As proven in this verse, 1 Corinthians 8.6, which says, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. This verse clearly states that there is only one God. Huh. He knows also huh? there is only one God. Okay, God the Father, from whom everything came from. The Son came from God the Father. The Holy Spirit came from God the Father. And everything in the heavens and the earth came from God the Father. Therefore, that only makes one God the Father. Or one God as the Bible says, okay? See, he himself admitted there's only one God. And yet he want to make two uh, two more other gods. But still they say one God, one God. To get a clearer picture of this discussion, please refer to my track entitled God Hate. To continue, please remember that during the Old Testament, the Son of God, the Father, was known as the Son. The Son of God, the, the Son of God, the Father, was known as the Son. The Son of God, the Father, was known as... Uh, it's the same thing, why must he repeat it? And in the New Testament, the Son of God, the Father, was known as... Jesus Christ. Hmm. With these thoughts in mind, let me add some verses that will prove that Jesus Christ is not a man. Okay? Now Jesus is not a man. He said that Jesus is not a man. In Jeremiah 17.5, it states, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that Trusted in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. When I talk with members of the spiritual congregations that believe that Jesus Christ is just a man, I ask them if they were putting their trust in Jesus Christ. They answered me with a yes, so definitely they were trusting Jesus Christ and according to them, Jesus Christ is a man. Now, this verse is stating that you will be cursed if you put your trust in man. When it comes to spiritual matters, Definitely, Jesus Christ is not a man because we are putting our trust in Him because Jesus Christ is a God and not a man. So, okay, now, at this, until this point, let me just sum up that Jesus Christ is the Son, is a God, and then Jesus has a Father, who is also a God. So, there are two gods, a uh, one family, okay, family of God. Uh, the Father, by the name of maybe Yahweh, I am, Jehovah, whatever, and Jesus Christ. So, both are God, like Father, like Son. Correct? Okay. That means there are, how many gods? Two. Including the Holy Spirit? Three. So, how many gods now? But they still say, oh, one. Okay? In John 1.18, it states, No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, He had declared Him. It says here, only Jesus Christ had seen God. Because Jesus Christ is not a man. No man had seen God. Yet, 
No man had seen God yet. No man had seen. <coughs> no man had seen Jesus yet. Can I put it that way? Earlier on, he said Jesus Christ is God, correct? Jesus Christ, because he said because Jesus Christ is God, okay? And then he said, no man had seen Jesus Christ yet. Can I say like this? Can I just say like this? Jesus Christ is a God, and then no man had seen Jesus Christ yet. So how does it sound to you now, fellow Christian? Hello, Christian. Hello, Christian. Are you sleeping? In Galatians 1, 12, it states, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle was speaking here, and he was claiming that the gospel he was teaching did not come from any man, except he received this knowledge from Jesus Christ. That makes Jesus Christ not a man, but a God. Correct? Again, he insists that Jesus Christ is not a man, but a God. But here he said, no man had seen Jesus Christ yet. No man had seen Jesus Christ yet. Am I so stupid? Maybe I am stupid. Okay? Yeah, my, maybe the Christians are... I uh, think maybe they are seven times having the wisdom much more better than the Muslim. Okay. Now in 1 Timothy 2, 5, 6, it states, For there is one God. <laughs> one God? Okay. Okay, let, let's just put it. For there is Jesus Christ and one mediator between Jesus Christ and men. Huh? The man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Believers, that Jesus Christ is just a man would use this verse to prove their point because it says here that Jesus Christ is a man, the man Christ Jesus. Okay? Well, this verse says the man Jesus Christ, but would you conclude right away that Jesus is a man? I don't think so. Please follow the next verse. Okay, okay. Giving him. In Psalm 22 6, it states, But I am a womb. A womb, womb, and no man, a reproach of man, and despise of the people. In this verse, it was the Son, or Jesus Christ, speaking here. And Jesus Christ was saying that he was a womb. <laughs> now, Jesus Christ is a womb, and not a man. Now, would you say that Christ is now a womb, a bookworm, because that was... The way he said it, this is actually self-explanatory. Oh, in John 15, 1 and 5, it states, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Oh, <coughs> well, would you say that Jesus Christ is a vine? If you concluded that Jesus is a vine, then I would say that your logic is out of reason. You see, when Jesus Christ himself say he is a vine, and then this fellow come to say something else about Jesus, you know, I don't know what to say about him. When Jesus Christ in John 17, 3 said that God is the only true God. And then, another Tom, Dick and Harry will come say, No, 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 it's not true. Jesus is also the true God too. You see? So who is corrupting the verses? 
Hmm? Clearly, the people without understanding, the one who is deaf, dumb, and blind, are corrupting the interpretation of the verses. John 17.3 stated very clearly that God is the only true God. And Jesus Christ whom God, the only true God, had sent to the world. Okay? That means Jesus Christ was saying there was absolutely only one God. And Jesus, the son of whatever, is not the God. Even though it stated somewhere in Timothy that Jesus was also the true God. Yes! Jesus was a true God just like Moses. Moses also was the true God. True God to the Pharaoh. Moses. And then Jesus was the true God to the Pharisees. Okay? Because of the miracles that they can perform. In that manner, they are the God. The small G. Okay, it's, it's like too long and then I am getting boring about what he trying to say because in fact he is actually contradicting himself and then I don't want to have you know, it, it, it's like becoming a rubbish, you know when you say when Jesus said there was only one true God the only true God is God. You can name it the Father. God the Father. But I'd rather say God the Lord. And Jesus was only the one that God so loved the world that he sent his beloved prophet. That's it. Simple. You no need to use the paganistic word Father and Son, Apollo and Zeus, you know, this type of Greek mythology that the Bible scribes had uh, plagiarized. Remember, Jesus was an Aramaic. Where do you find an Aramaic original Bible? Where? Don't have. They don't have it. But what do they have? They have the Bible in Greek, which was later translated into Latin, which was later translated into the King James Version. Okay? So, that's why Allah said, Why would I send a Quran in a different language when the Prophet himself is an Arab? So, therefore, the Quran must be in Arabic. So where is the Aramaic Bible? This, my fellow Christian, my brothers and sister, if you believe in God, there is only one God. Because Jesus Christ said so. Okay? Thank you very much.